Bienvenidos. Welcome. Let's talk about automata, a kind of abstractions that help you describe and generate strings. Obviously, that's not what these are. Uh, the term automaton originally meant a kind of robot or a machine that could perform an action again and again. As you can see on the right, the, the first ones were wooden. This is a kind of Pinocchio that spins a wheel again and again and again. The one on the left is more interesting. This is a Karakuri Ningyo, a kind of doll from Japan that performs actions in a series of steps. So as you can see, it grabs an arrow, it pulls on the bow, and then it releases, and there goes the arrow. It performs a series of actions, grab the arrow, pull on the bow, release the arrow, and it does it in a very strict order. It is also deterministic in that not only does it do it always in the same order, but it's going to be doing it again and again and again for as long as it runs. This is the inspiration for the computational term, automaton. What we call an automaton is going to be an abstraction, a kind of abstract machine that goes through different states and where you can go from one to the other by performing an action. So this is a turnstile, for example. Let's say you have one in front of you. So let's start our, inter our interaction with it. You will find it locked. This is the state of the turnstile. You could do several actions. One of the inputs that you can provide to the system is to push it. If you push it, you're going to find yourself back in the same state. You're going to see that it's locked and it will remain locked. And if you push it again, it will remain locked. You could do a different kind of input. You could put a coin in. Once you put a coin in, you're going to have a transition into a different state. This state is going to be for the turnstile to be unlocked. Once it's unlocked, you can provide the system with two inputs. You can keep putting coins in which is going to transition into keeping it unlocked, or you can push on the bar. When you push, you can go through, but you also switch the system from the unlocked state to the locked state. And then you're back on that, you're back on that state. Here, you can again provide the inputs push and coin to go again. Again, an automaton is an abstraction. It has different states. So this has two states, locked and unlocked. It has inputs, put a coin or push, and it has transitions. So if you're locked and you provide the input coin, you go into unlocked. If you are unlocked and you provide the input coin, you remain in unlocked. So again, an automaton has transitions, inputs, and states. A kind of automaton is a finite state machine. This is a subkind of automaton. It is a structure with the following elements. It has symbols or inputs into the system. It has states that it can transition in between. So it has different states that the machine can be in. It has transitions between the states so that there's an orderly progression in between the states that you want. It has one initial state, which is where you find the abstraction or the program as it begins. And it can have a set of final states. So places, ways in which the program can end. For example, this is a finite state machine. The turnstile has an initial state, which is for you to find it locked. It has two inputs, put in a coin or push and it has different transitions. The transition from locked to unlocked, which happens with the input coin. The transition from locked to locked, which happens with the input push. The transition from unlocked to unlocked, which happens with the input coin. And the transition from unlocked to locked, which happens with the input push. So again, this finite state machine has states, locked and unlocked, it has inputs, coin and push, and it has transitions in between the states. A light switch is also a kind of finite state machine. You have an initial state, which is, for example, finding it on. You provide the input, press a button, and then this will transition from the on state to the off state. You're now in off. So if you want to perform the input button pressed, that is now going to transition you from off 
to on. As you can see here, if you have an initial state on, you have states on and off, you have inputs, so in this case, just one input, one symbol, the button press, and you have a transition from on to off triggered by the input button pressed, and a transition from off to on triggered by the input button pressed. So far, we haven't mentioned end states, so let's look at them now. This finite state machine accepts or rejects a string. So it has one initial state, which is the number one, start, and it has two end states, number six, error, and number seven, success. So success is going to happen when we recognize the string nice, which as you can see is the road from one, two, three, four, and then on to seven. So if we're in state one at the initial state, and we get an input that is the letter N, this is going to transition us from state one to state two. If the input is anything that is anything other than an N, this is going to transition us from state one to state six, eh, an error, and then it's going to reject the string because it is not nice. Once we have the N, we're on state two. When we're on state two, we can take the input I and then transition to state three, or anything that is not an I and transition from state two to state six, eh, an error. Because if we got an O, for example, no, then that string is not nice. We can go from state three to state four if we get the C, so that would be NIC, or we could go from three to six if we get anything that is not a C, and again, eh, we get an error. If we get nice, for example, then you go one, two, three, error. Six. If you are number four, you get an E, and then you transition from four to seven, and ding, it checks out. Your finite state machine has accepted the string as being nice. If you get anything that is not an E, for example, the H in niche, you would go from one, two, two to three, three to four, and then number four, you get an H for niche, and then it goes into the state error six. Eh. So this finite state machine goes into state number seven, which is an nth state, if it gets the string nice. It goes onto the nth state number six, if it gets any other string, like niece or niche, for example. Notice, by the way, that you can only be in each state, you can only be in one state at once. At any given time, you can only be in one state. And this is true for all of the finite state machines that we have seen so far. If you're in a turn still, you can only be locked or unlocked. You cannot be both states. If you are a light switch, you can only be on or off. You cannot be in more than one state. And here, you need to be at a particular stage of the string. You cannot be in two places at once. This is a very simple finite state machine. What do you think the string is? You start at zero and then you get the input C, go to one, input A, go to two, input T, go to three, and then end state. And we are going to represent the end states as two circles. This automaton, this finite state machine rep uh, represents, I'm sorry, accepts the word cat. Regular expressions and finite state machines are closely related, and you can convert one to the other. For example, if you have the regular expression at least one A and at least one B, you can, you can see that that regular expression will generate a lot of strings. It will generate the string AB, where you have at least one A and at least one B. It will also generate ABB. It will also generate ABBBBBB. Likewise with the finite state machine. If you go to the initial state zero, you can transition from zero to one with an A, so you always start with an A, and then to create the first string, you would go from one to two, B. So you go from zero to one, A, one to two, B, and then you're in an end state, end of the string, and you generate the string A, B. To generate the last one, you would go from 0 to 1, 1a, one and then you would go through 1, 
two, three, four, five times to generate A, 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 A. And then you would go from one to two, one B, and then you would go B, 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 four times until you've had, you have the string A, B, 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 and then you hit the end state. This one would work like that as well. This regular expression has at least one A, one X, and then at least one B. So you can generate strings like the first one, AX, I'm sorry, AXB, going from zero to one, one A, from one to two, one X, and from two to three, one B, end state. You can also generate more complex strings like the last one, AX, B, 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 B. You go from zero to one, A, from one to two, X, and from two to three, I'm sorry, from two to three, B, and then you cycle in three, B, 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 as many times as you need to generate A, X, B, 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 B. So you can think of both a regular expression and a, and a finite state machine as a kind of grammar that generates strings. Both the regular expression and the finite state machine will generate a series of strings, A, X, B, A, X, B, 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 and these are all of the permissible strings in the language that's generated, I'm sorry, in the grammar that's generated by these uh, finite state machines. One kind of transition, by the way, is called an epsilon transition. An epsilon transition is one where there's no input symbol consumed, and it's represented by the EPS or just by the Greek letter epsilon. So for example, in this uh, finite state machine, what are the strings that are generated by it? It has it goes from zero to one C, one to two A, two to three T, and then so by then you have the string cat. When you go from three to four, you have an epsilon, which means zero or nothing. So when you get to four, you have C A T nothing, and by the end of four you have cat. If you go from one, two, three, and then from three to five, you get the S. So, cats. So the string that's generated in the end state four is cat. The string that's generated in the end state five is cats. So this finite state machine is a grammar that describes two words, cat and cats. Quick question. How would you expand this finite state machine to accept the words dog and dogs? so that it's, it accepts four things, cat, cats, dog, and dogs. Let's look at it. You could have something like this. The upper part is what we had before. So if you go zero, one, two, three, four, you would see that it has cat and then epsilon, so cat, and we reach state four, and in state four we have cat. If we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, we have cats. By the time we reach the end state 5, we have cats. So let's put, let's, uh, put in dog and dogs. If we go from 0 to 6, we could have a transition that is triggered by the input D. If we go from 6 to 7, we could have the symbol O in the transition. If we go from 7 to 8, we could have the symbol G. And then we could go from 8 to 9 with another epsilon transition so that when we reach the end state 9, we have dog. We could go from 8 to 10 and have the symbol S. So when we go 0, 6, 7, 8, 10, we could generate the string dogs. So by the end state 4, you have cat. By the end state 5, you have cat. In end state 9, you have dog. In end state 10, you have dogs. This is a finite state machine that can describe four words. Cat, cats, dog, dogs. In summary, an automaton is a kind of abstraction, a kind of machine that goes through states. A One kind of automaton is a finite state machine, which has states, transitions in between the states, inputs that you can provide to trigger the transitions, 
initial states where you start and final states where you generate an output or where you accept an output. Uh, I'm sorry, an input. You can only be on one state at any given time. And very importantly, you can never look backwards. If you don't have an explicit connection going through something, you cannot look at what other states contained. We can use these finite state machines to accept or reject strings, but more interestingly, to generate strings. So maybe we could come up with some sort of finite state machine that generates all of the sentences of English. More on this coming up.